I'm Greg Matthews, and uh, I had the good fortune of uh, getting to spend some time with uh, Dave DeBroncard here today, and I, I told him a story. Uh, and uh, it was a story about how he helped to change my thinking on an important subject. Um, two years ago, I was working on behalf of one of my clients to produce a live event, and at this event, we really wanted to have an e-patient representative as a part of a panel. And so I reached out to Dave and asked if that was something that he would be interested in doing. And he asked me about whether the client was going to be uh, offering a stipend or an honorarium or another, any other kind of financial uh, remuneration for the, for the opportunity. I said, no, they've, they've said that their policy is that they don't do any reimbursement for speaking. And Dave very politely but firmly talked to me about the fact that E-patients are out there doing what they are doing because they're really passionate about it. They care and they're part of a community, but they're also people that have jobs by and large. It's very, very rare for somebody to be a quote unquote professional e-patient that can just support themselves based on that. And so what I was really asking someone to do without thinking about it was I was asking them to take time off, to go out of their home city, to spend time with a group of people who you know, may or may not resonate with their story and not really offering them much of anything in return. And it has really resulted in a sea change in terms of the way that I think about interacting with e-patients. Um, and my belief is that e-patients are a critical, if not the critical part of the health ecosystem. And to be able to nurture and treat them with the kind of respect they deserve, it means that we need to acknowledge that we're, you know, if we want to learn from them, they deserve something in return. Well, and I think the, f first of all, it, it's, it's great that our conversation worked out that way. Uh, I think I'm a businessman myself. I, w I was in business my whole life before I got sick, and I'm accustomed to seeing industries evolve, fall apart to pieces, come back together again. And it always has to do with realigning value, mm -hmm. you know, and the issue here is in the past, the whole culture of medicine has viewed you know, uh, patients as just sort of something that happens to be sort of on the floor as we do our work. Well, and then so now people are starting to listen uh, and wonder what patients are thinking. What I was essentially being asked to do, what patients are commonly asked to do, uh, is donate their time, basically donate money to the business event, mm -hmm. you know, which when you think of it that way is, is really pretty silly. But there's another aspect to it. So the Institute of Medicine in 2012, in, in this 380 page report they published, Best Care at Lower Cost, they said that uh, the future of medicine has to be, the words they used were anchored on patient needs and perspectives. So now we have like this authority at the top of academic medicine saying that the patient's way of viewing things is of foundational importance. So now think about any other industry. New research shows that a particular component now is vital, like there's a new cornerstone, you know, to the way you do your business. So now what do you do? You say, well, you know, that's, uh, that's great, but I don't want to spend anything on it. I think I'll find whatever loose pieces I can find lying around for free. And it's not as if medicine was an, it was an industry that wasn't founded on science and research. Well, and that's sure. But the, the other thing is this starts to shift the whole thing because if you no longer just take whatever patient voices you can get for free, mm. then it starts to put the onus on patient voices to professionalize, to become more competent. Yeah. at their contributions. It's no longer just a matter of come in and tell me the sad story of how your case unfolded, but you need, to, the patients now need to start going in thinking, as I, I teach people, I have a blog series, Speaker Academy, uh, you need to understand what's going to be on the minds of the people in the room. Right? Uh, what, what are their concerns, because as with any other professional speaking engagement, uh, you're not going to have any impact if you think it's all about you as the speaker. Mm -hmm. So, and this is so. This is what you're helping to create. And I hope, and I'm just one small guy, but now I'm propagating that view across my firm, and we work sure. with healthcare companies around the world. And I think what you said really resonates, and it actually echoes something that Sarah Bramblett said earlier today. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I could help patients who are writing physician reviews, for yes, example, to exactly. do so in a way that's actually going to facilitate change sure. rather than just to express, you know, a, a, what's usually a negative emotion. Um, and I think that, I think it's absolutely right. If patients are going to be 
a foundational part of the process. I think it's really great to be able to step up to the plate and do that in a way that's really constructive and, and uh, you know, sort of taking that seat at the table. There's one more initiative I'd like to give a plug to. It just started this year, and it somewhat sprang out of my Speaker Academy series. There's a new nonprofit called the Patient Voice Institute. It's started by a woman named Pat Masters, who herself was a TV news anchor for 25 years. She had a horrible disaster. Her father died of an infection, but that's, that's not the point. Um, she is using her professional skills to teach other patients and uh, start to develop more of them. And her, you know, her colleague in this thing, I'm an advisor to them, uh, but they do most of the work, is Diane Stolenwork, who for years worked at the National Quality Forum. These are people who have chops in the medical industry mm -hmm. and in uh, pr professional media, so. Excellent, sounds like a great organization. And uh, yep. yeah, glad to, be, uh, glad to be on the right team. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Bye.